If we want to look at linked values from two separate tables in ArcGIS Pro, we can do this with a join or a relate. And later we'll look at how we can do this more permanently as well. The separate tables can be from two standalone tables, feature classes, shapefiles, Excel worksheets, or a mix of these. Any feature with a table can be linked, provided they have a field with common values. This is the key. And these fields don't have to have the same name, but they must be the same data type. So numbers to numbers, text to text, and so on. Whether we do a join or a relate is dependent on what type of relationship, called cardinality, there is between the two tables. If there is a one-to-one -one relationship, we can do a join. That is, one record from the main table is linked to one record in the other table. If there is more than one record in the other table, this is called a one-to-many relationship. And if we do a join with a one-to-many relationship, only the first record in the other table that has the same key will be joined. And you will not see the other related records. So this could be misleading. But if you are sure there is only going to be one record in the other table, there might be none. Not all records in the main table need to have a, a related record in the other table, but a join will display any records that have the key field in common. Also works for many to one. In this case, we have more than one record with the same key value in the main table to only one value in the other table. And in this case, that record in the other table will be duplicated in the join. Most of the time, a join is one-to-one. -one. But the main point with a join is the link is to only one feature in the other table. And to implement a join in ArcGIS Pro, we can go to the feature in the contents pane that holds the main table and right click. Join and relate and add join. We can also add the join from the attribute table menu. We need to set up the join in the dialog. So the main table is the input table. Then we need to define the field that is our key. All the fields from the attribute table are listed. So we pick the field that has the common values. Then we pick the join table. So this is the feature that has the other table we're linking to and then pick the key field from the other table, which may or may not be the same field name. There's a couple of checkbox options. Keep all target features will show all the values from the main table. If we untick this, then any records that don't have a join, so no related records in the other table, will be excluded. So we only get records that have a relationship. Indexing is to improve performance. So this might be worth ticking if it's a very large table. Validate join checks that the join is correctly set up and how many matches we have between the tables. Now with a join, the two tables can be used as if they are one table. So the attributes from the other table are appended to the end of the main table. Where we don't have a record in common, the values are just blank where they would be from the other table. We can also see the attributes from both tables if we view them in a pop-up window. And we can use these joined attributes anywhere we would use attributes from a single table, like labeling and symbolizing, running definition queries, calculate field, running geoprocessing tools, and so on. Very useful where you have a one-to-one -one relationship between layers or tables. Let's consider if we want to link records from the main table to more than one record in the other table. So either a one-to-many relationship or a many-to-many -many relationship. To do this, we can use a relate. To set this up, the process is the same. We right click on a layer with a main table in the contents pane Select join and relate, and then this time add relate. Again, we can do the same thing from the attribute table. The add relate setup dialog is pretty similar to the add join, 
we're just setting up the layers or tables involved and key fields. We do have this option to give the relate a name because you can set up multiple relates between this feature and others if you want. We set the cardinality to be what type of a relationship we have. In this case, we're going to do a one-to-many relationship. Once the relate is set up, the attributes are not appended to the main table like they are with a join. Instead, we can select some records in the main table and from the table menu, click Related Data and the related table with the related records will appear. And this can work in reverse as well. We can select records from the other table and see related records in the main table. If we use the pop-up, the related records are also listed. It also gives us a count of how many related records there are, which can be useful. An important point to remember is joins and relates are temporary. So if we close and reopen this project, even after saving, any joins and relates will be lost and you would need to create them again. If you want to make this link more permanent, then we have a couple of options. Having created a join, not a relate, export the feature, right click, data, export features, and this will create a new feature class or table with all attributes from both tables permanently joined together. I find this quite handy to permanently join a spatial layer like a feature class with a table from something like uh, an Excel spreadsheet. Another option for something more permanent is to create a relationship class. Note, it is necessary to have at least an ArcGIS Pro standard license for this. Can't do it with a basic license. A relationship class is a feature that can only exist within a geodatabase. To create, Go to the geodatabase in the catalog window, right click, new and relationship class. This opens up the geoprocessing tool. So this is similar to setting up a relate, but we can have a more complex relationship between two features and tables. So the origin table is the main table and the destination table is the other related table. We will define the relationship class that is going to be created. It is given a default name, but this can be edited. The relationship type is referring to whether to enforce referential integrity or not. That is, if we select composite, when a record in the main table is deleted, all records in the other related table are automatically deleted as well. This is called a cascade delete. That will not happen if a relationship type is set to simple. The labels will appear in things like the dialogues and identify the relationship more clearly, particularly when working with multiple relationship. We'll see an example of that in a minute. Again, we can edit the default names. We define the cardinality, one to many in this case. The relationship class is attributed option is if you want to store information about individual relationships. This option will create a new table in the geodatabase. You will also get a new table if the cardinality is set to many to many. Finally, we define which fields are the key fields. The primary key is from the main table and the foreign key is from the other related table. Run to create the relationship class. We can now see the class is in the geodatabase. So we have established a permanent relationship or at least until we delete this class. So if we select a feature in the map, it's very similar to a relate. We see the related records in the pop-up. Here is that label we defined in the geoprocessing tool just to make things clearer. We could also see the relationship if we went through the attribute table. So if you want a relate that's going to exist longer than one session or you want to enforce referential integrity, then you can create a relationship class. So that is how we link different data sets in Pro that have a key field in common. 
And if you want to see an example of how to use a join to copy values from an Excel worksheet to a field in a layer using the Calculate Field tool, then watch this video.